America, uh, leg of the tour, and uh, we're very happy that uh, on this uh, final seat we have a chance to come after all these years for the very first time in Paraguay. And uh, we're excited to be here and uh, looking very much forward to the concert tomorrow night. Después de los 45 años, el futuro latinoamericano está muy contento de poder visitar Paraguay, ¿verdad? Y están muy felices, ¿verdad? De que van a poder tocar acá y de que esperen que todo salga bien. ¿Alguien más quiere preguntar algo? Sí. Sí. Liz Arzo de Revista Plus. ¿Cuál creen que es el aporte más importante que han hecho al mundo de la música a lo largo de su carrera? ¿Cuál creen que es el aporte que has hecho a la música durante tu entera carrera? the biggest important apart that you made to music itself. Say again. That what's the biggest thing that you gave to music during your entire oh. trajectory? Well I mean Scarvin's played in so many many different parts around the world and we always have the feeling uh, that music is also the, the tool to reach out for people of different cultures uh, religions, you know, uh, to building bridges, bringing people together in a, in a peaceful way with music. De que durante toda su trayectoria de los Rolling Stones, verdad, ellos piensan que la música es una herramienta para llevar a unir a las personas en cuanto a religión, diferentes formas de ser, culturas, verdad. Yes. Alguien más? Sí. Hi, Camila Resi from the Latin and Stan. First of all, thank you so much for being here. We're so glad and proud to have you here. And very excited also for the concert in today. But this is, this is the last tour you're having. I would like to know, um, what is the message that you want to send to all your fans around the world with this last tour? We're all having that, but you know, sad feeling because it's the last tour, but also glad to have you here on your last tour. So what is the message that you would like to send? Your fans, not only here but in all Latin America. I mean, we want to say thank you for supporting the Scorpions for so many years. I mean, we had the ex first experience uh, in South America in uh, 1985, Rock in Rio, and we were completely uh, uh, surprised by the fans because they're crazy. In the whole of the South American area, it's like unbelievable rock and roll forever, you can say. So we want to say thank you for supporting the Scorpions for so long and also to give us a chance to play also in South America because it's a beautiful part of the world and we always enjoy to coming over here and we would even come earlier here but uh, the problem was mostly the routing was not uh, in, the, in the same situation. In this case we are very happy that we this time our promoter Paul Baron made it happen to bring us over here. I'm guessing you're going to like it so much that you'll be coming back for vacations, maybe. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Lo que quería saber, en la era del post industrial, este, ¿cómo se siente hoy en día seguir batallando con el rock, con el hard rock? And... How do you feel now in the era of the industrial pop that you're still in the business? Uh, what, what's it like to feel that? After so many years, it's a privilege. It was around, you know, when you think about it. Maybe when we started, nobody would have thought uh, that after 40 years uh, we would come to Paraguay, for example. And we're still rocking the world, you know, and uh, I think it's a wonderful thing, especially seeing not only our long-time fans who are supporting us for so many years, but also a whole new generation of Scorpions fans, uh, young kids, uh, being excited about our music, and that's, that's, I think it's wonderful. Okay. Ellos pensaron que era, nadie pensaba que ellos iban a llegar tan lejos durante la historia, están felices que puedan seguir estando acá, ¿verdad? Y seguir batallando y mostrar las músicas directamente a todo el mundo y van a seguir tocando. Sí. Sí, Sergio no es de última hora y le quería preguntar, Matanada, o sea, ¿por qué en esta gira de despedida en la que, no sé si es de despedida en realidad, ellos lo dirán? ¿Y por qué eligen, por ejemplo, venir a Bolivia y a Paraguay en este último tour que se están haciendo por Latinoamérica? Um, he's asking why did you decided to come to Paraguay on this last tour? 
is his question that he's asking and why after Bolivia, for example? As I said before already, yeah, we told our promoter we would love to play here already many years ago. But the problem is the routing, the possibility to put the, the cities and countries together was not possible. This time it was perfect and this situation why we came late, but better later than never. Dice como le había respondido a la señorita, ¿verdad? De que el tema es haciendo la ruta de los tours, antes no podía directamente venir acá. Y justamente gracias a Pablo, que es su, su booking manager, ¿verdad? Directamente pudieron armar para poder traer acá, o sea, llegar hasta acá y poder cumplir eso. ¿Alguien tiene otra pregunta? Sí, sí. ¿Qué tal? Eh, bienvenido, doctor eh, Scorpio. Para mí es un privilegio eh, estar acá con ustedes. Y quería preguntarle, eh, después de. 40 años de carrera musical, ¿cómo se sienten al llegar a la cumbre del éxito en su carrera artística y cómo eso transmite a, a la gente que va a estar este martes en su concierto? Bueno, él dice, primero, bienvenido, él está emocionado de tenerlo aquí, y su pregunta es, ¿cómo te sientes de estar en el top de tu éxito como músico, como músico? Me siento bien, o sea, but it's not all like just looking back, you know, we're still looking ahead and into what new music adventures might be waiting for all of us around the corner. And uh, for now, yeah, it's the financing tour because we try to stop the massive touring around the world, but there are still a few projects uh, coming up, for example, like uh, we started uh, a film about the band, a uh, documentary, a rockumentary. We started filming uh, last year in Thailand and we went to LA, to London, to Paris, to Berlin, a lot of places around the world. And this will be probably released next year. So there are a few projects in the can and so we will be very busy even uh, after the end of 2012. Su respuesta es de que no es tanto mirar atrás en su éxito, sino mirar hacia el, hacia el futuro, ver que puede haber un proyecto nuevo en cada esquina, de que están apuntando directamente a otros nuevos proyectos. Y la razón por la cual es el último tour Sting es solamente para parar el, el touring que vienen haciendo hace mucho tiempo, porque ya es un tour masivo y de que tienen otros proyectos, por ejemplo, hacer un documental, unas películas que han estado en París, en LA, ¿verdad? en otros lugares viendo y de que posiblemente el próximo año ya se puedan ver. Sí. sí, yo soy Sergio Ferreira ABC. Eh, en un momento de la carrera de grupo, eh, Rudolf Schenker tuvo un problema en la, en la voz, ¿verdad? Y tuvo que ser intervenido. Pero, Michael Michael, Michael perdón. Y, y a, a, eh, bueno, y a partir de eso se, se recuperó, pero hicieron uno de, los, de sus mejores discos a partir de eso. Eh, él que pensaba que la, se acababa la historia del grupo. ¿Cómo era? Y otra cosa, y la segunda pregunta es, ¿cuánto piensa recaudar por la guitarra que se, se va a subastar? Okay. Uh, he has two questions. The first question is, uh, after the damage that you have on your vocal cords, you have to make sure that you have to make sure that you have to that you have to make sure 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 that you have to <laughs> I, I, I couldn't sing and I was totally depressed after I had surgery on my vocal cords and uh, it's a story it's been told many times and uh, but after all uh, it all worked out and um, I was starting all over again with uh, the recording sessions for Blackout and Black, Blackout, the album Blackout became uh, like a worldwide success and uh, yeah, it was like the second life as a singer, the second life as an artist, and uh, I'm very happy about it. <laughs> Dice que sí, pensó que su carrera se acababa, ¿verdad? De, luchó mucho, se deprimió mucho, y después comenzó, comenzó a recuperarse, y fue cuando grabaron el otro álbum, y eso fue como tener una segunda oportunidad como músico, ¿verdad? Y bueno, uh, the second question is about the guitar that's going to be auctioned. How, how much is it gonna like? How, how much do you think you're going to have? 
How it's going to be in the minimum wage for it? Okay, uh, very easy. Um, the guitar company, which was supposed to send the guitars, send the guitars, but they're somehow traveling around the world now and nobody can find them. <laughs> so in this case, the next auction, auction will be the lucky auction, because after finding the guitars, uh, then uh, it will be even the story on top of that, which makes the guitar even more interesting. The other question is then, how many days? How many days this guitars will be around? <laughs> so and then we can say uh, um, around uh, in uh, 80 days around the world or something like uh, guitar. <laughs> Dicen de que la compañía que enviaba la guitarra, vamos a decir que se perdió en el camino y sigue girando alrededor del mundo, verdad? Y que vamos a ver si la próxima vez que tocan se va a poder subastar y que realmente va a tener una historia ya encima de eso. ¿Qué sería? Se va a llamar la guitarra que la cantidad de días que lleva rondando el mundo, ¿verdad? Que corre el mundo por ese tiempo. Sí. Si, Carmen, um, consider, considering this is your last tour and uh, this is the first time you're going to play in a country you might barely know, what are your expectations for Tuesday night? Tuesday night. <laughs> crazy fans, crazy yeah. fans. I mean, we had already crazy fans on top of the uh, hotel. Show at the good pace, and it works, you know. And 
Yeah, we have so many ballots, you know, that always somewhere is one of them, so we'll see. And we had a point is also we have a very a big show with some uh, um, a big screens and stuff, and there's many kind of things which are connected to the songs, which the whole crew is involved in. So we can't change so strong and strange the, the whole set because that would make the whole um, concert dangerous. In this case, we stick with not our sets to the to the uh, way and to the line. And the problem is mostly when we take maybe send me angel out and play instead of that always somewhere. The other part of people coming said, "Why you didn't play Send Me Nature?" <laughs> so you can't win in this situation, you know. Play, play all the songs. <laughs> yeah. After that, we are dead. Sure, you can see. Do you remember that when we did Winner of the Winner of the Chain? The two months after the fall of the Wall of Berlin. Eh, ¿cómo, cómo, fue, o sea, ¿Cómo fue que compuso eso? Eh, si fue como pensando que iba a pasar ese hecho o por el momento político, ¿cómo fue que compuso esa música? His wondering is, how did you get the music when it changed? Because it was two months before the, uh, when they turned on the wall. But if it was due to that or, or, or which thing that inspired you to write the song. Sí, uh, you know, about uh, wind of change or no wind of change, we were in Russia at the time, in the Soviet Union, in the old Soviet Union days, with the KGB following us around uh, in 88, 89, and uh, we could feel the changes were in the air, and uh, it was inspired by what, what we experienced. Uh, in those two years, 88, 89, and, and we could see at the Moscow festival in 89, the summer of 89, that uh, there was a whole new generation and many, many fans, young kids said the time of the Cold War will be over soon, you know, and so this was the inspiration. And for us, being a German band, uh, where our parents went to war uh, with Russia and the whole world, you know, so. We said our parents came with tanks, we're coming with guitars, so we were much more sensitive about it. Well, the answer is that during a very long time, you felt that the KGB was pursuing you, or the KGB was pursuing the people, that was one of the moments that also went to war, and they felt the changes that there were. Directly. And after that, also, the problem was that there were also festivals that were going on at that moment, but also the KGB was pursuing you at that moment. What, um, seeing that you're here before the concert, the days before, have you seen anything in particular that you like, or do you will you like to go and see something about here? Do that you're gonna be here before the concert. You're gonna try to look at something if you have that interest or not. I heard there's uh, the biggest waterfalls in the uh, like 300 kilometers from here. Yeah, yeah the waterfall is like Paraguay, Brazil, you know, mm -hmm. it, but it's it's by car, I think it's by horse or something, right? Yes. Uh, so, but it would have been very, very yeah. cool to see those uh, amazing waterfalls. <coughs> but right now we're here and uh, we hope to see a little more of the city. It's the uh, first time on this tour, uh, on this leg of the tour, that we have more than just one day off, you know, today's the press conference, but there's another day tomorrow. We're invited by the, I guess, the German embassy tomorrow, and uh, next day is the show. But, you know, rarely it's, we have this kind, this amount of time, so maybe we have a chance to see a little bit more of the city of Ascension, and uh, that's cool. Y sé de que, bueno, así como escucharon que le gustaría ver las, 
las cataratas, pero un poco lejos, pero igual es prácticamente la primera vez que les toca que están más de un día antes de que queden libres y de que planean ver los alrededores y ver que hay en Asunción y eso. Sí. Entre, entre Ocher es so nice. We even don't want to leave this hotel because <laughs> it's, it's here. <laughs> the pool is great, the hot stuff is great, the spa is great, the water temperature of the pool is fantastic, the food is amazing, yeah, and what else you want? And we come from Germany, you know, and we love soccer, you know, and to come here when we saw this huge soccer ball in front of the hotel, we said, it's very cool. Bueno, de queriendo de que les gusta el spa, la pileta, las cosas que tienen en la comida también y como dice después de que vienen de Alemania, les gusta el fútbol, estar al lado de, de la comedor y ver las pelotas, porque te busca mucho directamente. Sí. Soy Pedro Israel, de Mona Flore Radio Show aquí, y necesito hacerte dos preguntas. Primero, para James y Paolo, necesito que tú me digas cómo tú lo haces, cómo tú lo haces el proceso get in Scorpion, such uh, legendary bands for you, the younger of the land. And if you think more uh, in the future to make a concert with the old members of Scorpions around their history. Well, um, I've, I was fortunate to open up, my band Kingdom Come opened up for Scorpions in 1988, and uh, we became friends. And one day they gave me a call, and I'm just thrilled to death and honored, and just I get to be with some of my best friends. I got my family at home, and I got my rock and roll family, and it's a dream come true, and I'm so thankful, and it's been a wonderful experience. For me, it was always a dream to play in a big rock and roll band, and I am, and to, once again, you know, the dream became real. Alguna otra pregunta? Sí. Another question, yeah. Um, we don't know when the last show is going to happen. That's why it's difficult to plan uh, to do something with all the members that have uh, ever been with the Scorpions. I think some of them don't really play anymore. The more popular ones we already played many times with. So I don't know uh, if that concept can be realized because um, we don't really plan on having the definite last show. It would make sense. The film team would love it as well to see everybody together on stage. But then it had to be like a big event. We had to plan for it like a long time ahead. And we have decided at the moment we play uh, until the end of the year. And we keep ourselves open for maybe like single events next year if something important comes up. <coughs> something like the World Cup in Brazil or something. We are inspired by the football obviously. And uh, so then we would come together, but if at the same time it would also work to get all the members together, you know, everybody's doing its own dance and so everybody's been, it's always difficult, sounds nice in theory, but it's not so easy to do. Sí, sí. sí. últimas dos preguntas. Sabemos que están preparados. Te podrías parar, por favor. Sí. Están preparando un documental acerca de la historia de la banda con imágenes históricas y también de esta gira. Quisiera saber si tienen planeado. Eh, filmar acá en, en, en Paraguay algunas imágenes y si pueden adelantar ese documental. Oh, he's, he's asking uh, if like you're doing this documentary about your tour and everything on your life, the Scorpion life. Uh, if you were willing or if you're gonna take pictures or things of this concert or of Paraguay to put it in your documentary, that's his first question. And the second is if you could like do it earlier so they can see it. <laughs> if you could. Show the documentary before time. I mean, we, we, we always have cameras around, and also here in Paraguay, and also. Um, but we don't know about in the end the editing what it will be, really, you know. But we, of course, we would love to keep all the most exciting moments uh, to this tour, and uh, so our fans can, can see it and, and share it with us, you know. So, but right now, we don't know. We, we, we don't have the whole crew uh, from this documentary team with us right now, but we have web cameras and we, we keep filming ourselves, but we feel this would be cool to, to, to have it on tape. I can so. take pictures for free if you want to. <laughs> I can take pictures for free if you want to. <laughs> I can take pictures for free if you want to. Pictures, yeah, for free. 
Bueno, pues me parece que siempre están grabando, siempre tienen sus cámaras de ellos para grabar y van mandándole al grupo que está haciendo el documental de ellos todos, de que ellos quisieran que entre todo dentro de su documental, pero no, no puede entrar todo y todavía no saben qué exactamente va a ver hasta el final de que terminen toda la edición, ¿verdad? Última pregunta, por favor. Um, what was what was the way of your success? Like, if, what did you give up to to be the Scorpions? If you give up something, or is there a secret? Like, so if you can tell other small groups that aspire to be you, they get a message on it. Well, some of us were working from seven to to five. You know, some of us were studying. You know, and so what we gave up is. Uh, you know, we never wanted to give up our dream to become a musician. And uh, so there was no sacrifice because we were just following our hearts and we lived our dream and all those years and decades, you know, so because this is what we wanted to do, to be musicians, be artists, write songs and travel all over the world, you know, and uh, it was a wonderful dream and it became true. Bueno, uno de ellos trabajaba de 5 a 7, los otros estudiaban, pero lo que todos llevaban en sí 